Il-Mediterran Space nassoċja uħma xemxu l-bajjiet zbiħ. Imma il-kalma apparenti tijaw taft għarraq bina u tħallina f-baħar inkwiet. The Boat, xoħol Winston Azzopardi u Ibnu Joe u film fuq sajjiet zazuħ li middaj sa um li tijaw jirke pal fuq jott ta' bandonat bin tritċi misterjuzi li jizidu u jikkomplikaw il-plot. I got involved in it, even when we were filming, I got involved in every department, you know, because when we were filming out at sea, we were only about seven crew members, so if I was stuck in a toilet and they needed to clap the board and they couldn't get in, I'd just take the board and be like, okay, act three, see take, take, go, okay. The post-production process was gr not just grueling because you're in this dark studio for four weeks, you know, and you're cutting your film, you're ripping it to shreds, you go from loving it to hating it within seconds, and sometimes, I don't know, I would come out afterwards and just be totally mind-boggled, more than the stress of filming it or producing it from beforehand, that, would, that took a lot out of me. But even the, I mean, the acting was not very hard mentally but quite hard physically because I had to get in freezing cold water just across the bay over there in the tanks in Ranella those freezing tanks I even got into the water in the, uh, the sea water and it was fine but in the filming tanks it was particularly cold I, yeah, I almost got hypothermia at one point because I was in the water for just way too long and there was the cameraman was telling me things to do and I'm just like I couldn't hear him even though I was right next to him it was hard <laughs> Acting's all about reacting, you know, and reacting off other actors is usually what feeds you in. But they, you know, yeah, usually in a backstory you discuss like your character history, you discuss relationships with other actors. I didn't have any of that work to do, so I guess it was a bit easier in that sense. But I did have what my main reacting things to do were it were about the sounds he listens to in the boat. So when he's in there and he's locked in the toilet, he hears sounds and these sounds lead him to believe that there's somebody on the boat doing this to him. Uh, but on the day, those weren't even there, you know, those were get added in, in post-production. It's a three-year project till this date and it started off as a short film and then from that short film developed into a feature film. But yeah, it's been about three years of solid work trying to get the money together to do the feature film as well, you know. Se selling it has been the, the weirdest thing for me as well. I've never had to do so much PR in a film before, but uh, it was, it's been fun. I've honestly really, really enjoyed it. We've sold it in 19 countries so far. Well, 20, I think. We're about to finalise another one at the moment. But yeah, and I don't really know. I don't really know what to expect from it as well. I'm not sure if that's going to like blow it. Like, I'm not sure if like China get it and the film blows up over there. It could become a sensation in China. I'm not really, I'm not really sure how it goes. Me and my dad are both avid sailors. I've been sailing since I could lift a rope up. My dad taught me how to sail and we just love boats. You know, every summer we'll sail to Sicily and back. And it's, I mean, ideas develop when you're on the sea as well. You say we're doing a night crossing from Sicily to Malta, which takes about eight hours. And I guess sometimes, you know, when you're just talking, and we're like, oh, imagine you got locked in the toilet and you're in the boat. And you're like, oh, yeah. So yeah, imagine the boat, like, and imagine the boat was going full steam ahead and you were locked in the toilet and you can get out. And I, oh, it's not like we're like, last script idea, but you know, eventually you start putting pen to paper, you start mapping it out a bit, and the script does develop eventually. But. I guess, yeah, I guess it just becomes from whatever passions that you have, and ours was the sea and sailing. I think we're both quite very different filmmakers, and if we'd have both had it the way we wanted it from the start, I don't think the film would have been as good, but the fact that we kept fighting, we always found this really good, healthy middle ground, which then made the story develop, even from story-wise, like even before, after the script was written when we were on the day, we were always saying, no, we should do this, no, we should do that. But they were, they were good, but I loved it, you know. It's, uh, and it's nice as well, it's quite new because you don't really hear about fathers and sons making films together. You always hear about brothers, sisters, you know. This is so, uh, quite happy to have the, to start off the father-son team making film experience. <laughs> I've not really heard a bad thing about it so far. Everyone's been so positive, the reviews have been great, but it's, I always have that thing in the back of mind, of like if someone didn't like it, they're never gonna tell me to my face, really. I mean, it's good for us as well. I love the fact that it makes people feel uncomfortable because it's working then. It's like definitely working, even for people who suffer with claustrophobia. It's very intense for them when somebody's trapped in a very small confined place with water up to here and they only have a little thing to breathe from. 
gets a bit too much for some people. The short film was all about testing if we can make people like feel that intensity and that tightness in a closed space, and it did work from that. So we knew the recipe worked, then to make a full-on feature film out of it. And hopefully, this film has been a big, big eye-opener for investors to actually invest in Maltese projects now and see that you can make money off a Maltese film. There's nothing keep me from sailing. I have many, many trips planned this summer, taking the boat all around, and I will not be getting locked in the toilet.